We love boondocking because it allows us to camp in amazing places like these. But being out here in the wilderness, we don't have the luxuries of being hooked up to things like electricity, water, and sewer. In this video, we are going to show you how we manage each of those three things, how we boondock. What a beautiful morning to be boondocking. These are all the items we've collected to help us boondock and provide electricity. We also have 100 watts of solar on top of our roof that we've mounted. We are Kyle and Nicole, avid travelers from Michigan. In 2021, Kyle quit his job and we have been traveling across North America in our travel trailer while I continue to work full time from the road. We love to create content showing amazing destinations, things to do, free camping spots, and RV life. We hope you will like, subscribe, and comment on our videos and join us for these fantastic adventures. You never know where we will pop up next. So I will go through and give a little bit of detail about each one of these items and describe how we use them to you. So this is the most obvious. This is our generator. It's a Predator 3500 bought at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's been a brute for us. It's got uh, approaching a thousand hours on it and it works pretty good. It'll do everything we need to run our air conditioner, all kinds of stuff. It's fairly quiet, comparable to a Honda. So this gets us by. Uh, this is the most annoying version to have to run the generator. We prefer not to whenever possible. We got a nice sunny day like today. So we'll talk about how we don't have to use this today. So the generator is about 100 pounds without any gas in it. Put a few gallons of gas, you get upwards of about 120 pounds. It gets heavy. There is a plug that you need for the generator. That's only 25 amps, our camp is 30. You buy this little adapter. The Predator actually comes with it, one of the few generators that comes with this plug for specifically for RVs. So here we are hooked up to generator power. This will run most of the day uh, on uh, just the little gas reservoir that has a couple gallons. Right now we're drawing two amps. Looks like about 840 watts. 822 hours on there. They're running for one minute. You can also uh, run these in parallel. They have that ability, but we have no need for that much power. Or you could get two smaller ones if they were too heavy for you. There's one other thing for the generator. I built this little box for when it's raining. And I also use this as a cover in the truck. Just put it over. Water and electricity don't mix real well. So in a rainstorm, I like to keep it dry. Next up we have these two Jackery power packs. This one is about a thousand watts of capacity and will run things up to a thousand watts. This one is 500 watts and will run things up to 500 watts. So we got these, they're pretty convenient. Inside they're a lithium battery with an inverter built in and they're portable so you can take them anywhere. So you can move them around the camper to plug in where we need to. And also for non-camping at home, you can use them during a power outage or if you're just somewhere where there's no power, you can just pick this up and take it. This one I think weighs about 10 pounds. This one's probably closer to 20 pounds. We have plugged the camper in. Uh, when the camper battery is low, uh, especially like when we're running a furnace a lot or things like that, and this will let you power the camper. We can also run the microwave off of it from the camper and uh, things like a toaster. It's not enough power to run the electric water heater uh, or the air conditioner. We need a much bigger one for that. So it comes in handy in a pinch. So they can be charged by AC, which would be off our generator. Or if we're going to a campground next, we just let them die and can charge them up at the campground. They also charge by 12 volt. So we charge them a lot in the truck. When we're driving around, we use that to power and we get like a free charge while the truck's running and we just arrive at our destination full. Last, these can be charged by solar panels. These are Solar Saga Jackery 100 watt panels. They're made specifically to charge the Jackeries. There is a way to also use them to charge other things. We haven't experienced that yet. So these are nice. Uh, these are portable, just uh, suitcase panels. They are portable, so sometimes you might be parked in a way that the roof solar is not gonna work, but we can still get these out because they're movable, where the roof mounted solar panels are obviously fixed in place now. The one downside of these is that these are not weatherproof, so you don't wanna leave them out during a storm. Although you don't get a lot of solar during a storm anyway. So they have a little storage compartment for the cord and they simply fold up and then the 
cord to go in the pouch. And these are very light, very simple. So they may only weigh a few pounds, no problem. And also, in the storage compartment here, there's USB plugs. There's a plug and you can charge USB devices. So now we're charging this phone. So the sun has just went behind a cloud. This was getting about 60 watts out of 100, and now it's getting eight. So you can see on a cloudy day, you're gonna still get a little bit, but next to nothing. So this Jackery, even though these panels are 200 watts, will only accept a max of about 120 watts. So it's gonna take you about eight hours if it's completely drained to charge up. This one, even though it's connected to a 100 watt panel, will only take about 80 watts. So, this is a little more than six hours to fully charge in the sun, and that's at peak capacity, which obviously is going to depend on your level of sun intensity. So you can also charge with DC. This comes with it. This is a cigarette lighter adapter plug. Plug it in. And we're gonna get, it's gonna drop down to about 40 watts. So I found out this plug is actually hot all the time. So you have to be careful. You don't want to kill your battery, but as the battery decreases in the truck, this will drop, and I don't think it will ever actually leave you stranded, but we don't ever chance it. We only leave it for a few hours at the most. And then also, when you start the truck, you're gonna get about 75, 80 watts. So here we have our twin jackeries charging off of AC power. The Explorer 1000 gets about 150 watts, and the Explorer 500 gets 85 watts. So the last item we have here is just a simple power inverter. And there are lots of ways we use this. So this takes 12 volt power and we'll turn it into 110 volt power. So one of the simplest ways to use this is we just have it hooked up to the camper battery. Simply turn it on. And then you can use a 110 appliance here. Now this one is very small, it's only about 500 watts. We only have the single battery anyway. So if you needed to power something small for a little while, this would do the job. Another option here we've done before as I've plug this inverter on top of the truck battery. I'll turn the truck on and let the truck run. And then I'll plug the camper into this. This is kind of like for an emergency situation. If we get in some bad spots, we can at least have some emergency power. Let's say generators aren't allowed, but we still need electricity for something. Uh, this will get us by as a little temporary patch. One final way to use this. We have a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug up here. It is designed if you have a 12 volt TV. Uh, but we have taken advantage of it to use many other things. Same concept, it's going to run off the camper battery. So we've used it to power our TV before. And now we can watch TV with no electricity. We've also used it to power Nicole's laptop or any other small device uh, for a little period of time. So these are from our solar panels on the roof. There's a charge controller mounted in here. Uh, I actually have a new one on the way. Uh, should be an upgrade. And so the wires run up the roof here through this mess. Solar panels are just mounted on the roof and that way they're always providing us power. So the panels themselves are 100 watts. Uh, as far as what we actually get all the time, I'm not sure. The new charge controller that I'm getting will be able to tell me that. So they basically can maintain our 12 volt needs during the day that we're on the water pump. Uh, everything takes 12 volt. There's always a parasitic drain on your battery, uh, carbon monoxide detector, refrigerator, all that stuff takes a little bit of power. So this maintains and will top off the battery usually during the day for us on a nice sunny day. We just have a simple RV battery. This is a group 24. It's pretty small and it gets us by. This is certainly not the correct application for what we do but upgrades are expensive and this is what we stuck with so it works for us at the very least i would recommend two batteries two plain uh rv batteries will get you a lot further would save us a lot of hassle you might be able to run your furnace all night and keep it at a comfortable temperature so here's all of our stuff to provide electricity for us there's a lot of backups to backups uh, it's kind of a hassle uh, other people get around this by investing a lot of money in 
larger battery banks for lithium, uh, lots of solar panels on the roof. This is kind of a low budget system, which is a little bit more labor intensive. And this is what we do. This is how we add water to our camper when we're boondocking. My trusty assistant holds the funnel. I hold the six gallon jug and pour it in. We find water usually at a lot of state and national parks. And there's usually spigots there for drinking water. And if you feel like it, you can ask just about any place if you can fill up a jug at a gas station, restaurant. No place will tell you no for water most likely. And every once in a while we do pay for it. This is how we extend our stay fill our water tank back up. Now I could get a pump, pump this out. Probably still need to use the funnel. Maybe not. But it's just one more thing that I have to rig up and carry with us and we already have enough gadgets. So we just use gravity. We have 30 gallons of fresh water, gray, and black storage. And through our boondocking experience, we have learned that we will run out of fresh first, then gray, then black. When it comes to water conservation and even recycling is super important. So we keep this little pink toe in our sink. We use this for water that comes out of our fresh water tank to wash our hands, vegetables, whatever. And this is really helpful because it has indicators on the side that tell us how much water it holds so that we have an idea when we dump it down the tank how much we're actually putting in. The little indicators that come on the RVs are not accurate at all. Then we'll recycle this by putting this in the toilet. So instead of filling up the toilet with water, we'll just use this and then we're not wasting fresh water. So some other ways that we help preserve fresh water is we try to use disposable items whenever possible. And that way we're not always using the water to wash dishes. We then have this little homemade power wash where we'll just fill it up with water and put some dish soap in it. And then we use that to spray and then wipe down our dishes. And then when we shower, we're doing the Navy shower. So we have on our nozzle a little start stop button. And so you basically get yourself wet, do what you need to do, and turn it back on. And it's cold and it's sometimes not the best shower, but it'll get you clean enough. And instead of taking full showers, we'll use these body wipes whenever we feel like we need a freshen up. Here are some more of our awesome boondocking spots. For us, after about five days, our water tank will be empty. So we'll have to find some more water. And we can usually make it seven to 10 days on our black and gray tank with no issue. Anything more than that, we have to start looking into other things. If you wanna know how long to boondock, a simple thing you can do is just go to a full hookup campground. Don't use any of the hookups, use your water tank and see how long you can go for. And then determine what you gotta do to go longer if you want to. Or you could do the same thing right in your driveway. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you found something useful in it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. It really helps us out. And we hope to see you in the next video.